Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We've got some stories today about a new term that we don't have recessions anymore. This what is a, transitor this, transitory. This inflation, you know, yep. different things that I like to call it. But this is not really a recession. It's called a full employment <laughs> recession. As 1.6 million people have gained jobs this year, but gross domestic output has shrank. Mm -hmm. We're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about the people in England that are gonna start receiving UBI, Universal Basic Income, and some implications of that. And I'd like to get your comments about that and what you think that's gonna, how that's gonna play out. And we've got some updates on the migrant issue that's going on in New York. Some organizations are going to get paid to house up to 19 male, uh, and I was, that was, that's strange to me how it was just I noticed males. that too, yeah. And, you know, it's just more problems. Sorry. <laughs> One day I'm going to have some good news. But before we get going, hit the like button, subscribe, and ring the bell if you like this kind of news, even if you don't like it, because it's news we need to pay attention to. Yeah, well, I have some good news. Look how many people were involved in the presidential uh, Republican <laughs> candidates. <laughs> there you go. That is crazy. Take your pick. I, you guys, thanks for participating in the polls that we've been putting out. It's really great to see your comments, and uh, I love to see the feedback on that. But, yeah, I think we're, what, at 7, 8 now? Christy just came out and said he's going to join, so I think that puts us at 8. So, you guys, there you I go. I said this morning, maybe I should run. Everybody else is. <laughs> hey, there you go. That's some good news. <laughs> and l looking at your comments about the polls, it's amazing. It just really validates how like-minded the community is that, yeah. that it's growing. So it's really cool. So, so all right, let's get into this. The We're, full the new term. employment recession. Okay. I'm going to call it stagflation. Okay. Employers have added 1.6 million jobs so far this year, but real gross domestic income has shrank both in the fourth quarter and the first quarter. Mm -hmm. The two negative quarters output growth are an indicator of recession. But oh, we, we got, got full employment, <laughs> so we can't call it a recession. Um, the, uh, along with the Federal Reserve raising interest rates, mm -hmm. trying to tame inflation, which should take more jobs out, you know, we'll see. Well, it has actually. It said this is the fifth straight quarter of negative year-over-year -year productivity growth. That's been the longest run since the records began in 1948. This is off the Wall Street Journal. I'm actually, when Chris does this video, I'm going to take this article and I'm going to put it in the description. You guys can check it out. But you guys should check out the chart. I mean, it is way down. You look at the thing. The uh, So we're, we're down and we're not. They're we're saying, down. <laughs> we're down. But they're we're saying, down. no, but there's plenty of employment. They're going to manipulate, manipulate this thing. Something doesn't add up. And ever and ever. Yeah, they're going to lie and they're going to keep on lying. Yep. And as they keep raising interest rates, and they're supposedly, they said, I guess to fight inflation, that they're going to have to continue to raise them. I don't I know. I guess they're going to whip up some new jobs along the way as we lose more jobs. I watched a thing the other day, an interview with uh, uh, Jerome Powell, how they pretty much put him on the spot. And they said, so does this mean you're actually printing money? And he quoted, he said, no, 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 no. We're just actually doing it in digit form. That's what he said. And I was like, oh, my goodness. Actually, I need to find that. But go ahead. Keep going. Well, in England, they're rolling out UBI. Now, I figure this is going to happen all over the place. Uh, we've got AI going to take a lot of jobs, you know, self-driving trucks, you know, Uber, all these uh, autonomous things that are happening is going to take a lot of jobs. Accountants, you know, you can go down that rabbit hole and see how many jobs are going to be taken out mm -hmm. by AI. And what are those people going to do for money? Well... You know, they're going to get some type of subsidy, and they're rolling it out right now. The people in England could be given 1600 a month, each in a trial of the universal basic income system. Now, this is a two-year pilot, would uh, trial a system that sees everyone given money by the state regardless of their needs or income. So they're going to give, you know, 30 people from northeast England free money. Researchers are now looking for financial backing for the mm -hmm. project. So if anybody wants to sign up to give away money. Well, I just interrupt you on that because it clearly states, it said, and they quote, this initiative is not being paid by the UK taxpayers and are not affiliated with the British government. So who is going to fund this free money? And uh, this Cleo Goodwin, she's the co-founder of Basic Income Conversation. She said, and I quote, no one should ever be facing poverty. Having to choose between heating and eating 
in one of the most wealthiest countries in the world. It, that takes me back to um, Obama, everybody should own a home. That, well, that wasn't Obama. No, that, that was that, Clinton. Was, Sorry. Was it, I forget who it was. Was it Clinton or Bush? It was, that was Clinton. Clinton. Clinton wanted everybody to own a home, yep. you know, and that caused the 2008 crisis. Yep. And, you know, it's just manipulation of the free market. I, mean, I completely agree. Well, I want to do another quote here. They say, quote, our society is going to require some form of basic income in the coming years. Giving the, tolmo, the, the climate change issues, tech disruption, industrial transition that lies ahead. So they're already saying, well, AI, there we go again. They're already saying that every country is going to need it. And where this is going to come from be interesting to see because I don't know who's going to fund it. Unless, I guess, I like do. Jerome Powell says, they're just going to... Print it in the form of digits. So. Yeah, but that's not printing. No, that's not printing. All the evidence shows that UBI would directly alleviate poverty and boost millions of people's well-being. The potential benefits are just too large to ignore. So there you go. We're going to see how that works out. Uh, you could look at the people that receive free stuff already, and it takes away incentive to do better. Mm -hmm. I'm the same way. Somebody showed up every day and gave me food. I'd just go fishing. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it too much. It's a, it's just a way. It, I see the need and I understand it, but it is virtually impossible to give somebody everything because they will probably be sorry and worthless. It's just it, human it is. nature. Yeah, if that's where I, Chris and I've talked about this before about when you take pride in something that you do. And it does not matter. We've even we've even said you, you even said when you were cleaning out the toilet. Remember you were talking about that time with the guy that that, that was cleaning out the toilets at your job. The the mm -hmm. things you said take pride in that. Do the best you can. If you take pride in something that the you do, Johns, the porta johns. The that's it. Yes, take pride. And I've always said that everything that you do, if you'll take pride in it. I, there's even a statement that comes out from one of the generals. When you get up in the morning, make your bed. Take pride in yeah, everything that you do, and. It's it's a rewarding whenever you work really hard, and at the end of the day, we'll be like, we accomplished this. But if you're just walking in and someone just hands you something, there's no pride, there's no respect for yourself. If you're cleaning toilets, if you're uh, doing a job that isn't very, you know, sought after, whatever it may be, be the bull at it. Be the one that shows up, does a good job. You won't be there very long. That's what a lot of people, they, uh, you know, you show up, it's a crappy job, you kind of do a halfway job. Mm -hmm. And any time I've half-assed anything, I have regretted it. Mm -hmm. And the people that show up and do that, people notice and they don't do it very long. It's like, wow, that I see um, kids at uh, bagging groceries at grocery stores. And I see somebody really going out of their way to do a good job, you know, be Johnny on the spot. And I'll talk to them, and you can tell our, they've got other things in mind. This is a stepping stone for them. So yep. whatever you're doing, if you don't like it, it can be just a stepping stone because people see that. They'll see how you how you manage. You know, if you can be faithful in little, you'll be faithful in much. So, you know, That's try to run That's actually from the Bible. It. Yeah, I can't remember where it's found. I can't either. Um, yeah, but so, that, so we'll be interested to see how this plays out. We'll be watching it because I'm sure at some point that they're going to want to try to bring it here. And then you want to talk about a little bit of what's going on with the yeah, New York City. Yeah, the New City. York City will begin to paying 50 houses of worship, 125 a night, to host up to 18 single men on their properties. Mm -hmm. Now, 125 a night to host 19 single men? Well, is it 125 a piece? It didn't specify, or is it just say. all together? I know, it didn't say. Yeah. But the taxpayer fund is funding hotels and shelters now that's costing the city $8 million a day. Mm -hmm. Now, this was back when only there was only 37,500 migrants. Now there's closer to like 42,000. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this problem is getting worse, and now it looks like the first place they're going to try to punt them at 125 a night to host up to 19 migrants is going to be the churches. And, you know, are they going to get their, you know, are they going to be in trouble if they don't? Can they say no? You know, wh where does this go? It's, it's, that's a really interesting story, and it's, uh, it's really sad, to be honest with you. Well, it's, it's such, a, such a mixed bag, as we talked about this yesterday. It's just like a can of worms that you're opening, because 
you've got really probably good people that are trying to get over here. Unfortunately, they're doing it illegally. Um, and now, how do you house them? And then you got the innocent that are going to be hurt. So you've got the bad apples that's going to completely ruin everything. Kids are going to be hurt. Seniors are going to be hurt. Churches are going to be hurt. People that open up their homes are going to be hurt. And it's just, it's just, I see a lot of not good things that could come from this. Yeah, well, the problem should have been solved a long time ago. With a wall. And they won't do it. They, and they want legal this. entry. They did it in Rome. They encouraged people to come over to be allies and soldiers. Think yep. about that. Think about the people that are coming over. We do not know. We know they're coming from the Mexican border, but we don't know their nationality. We don't, you know, I've worked with a ton of different uh, nationalities, and I got along with every one of them. But when you try to mix and live under the same roof and provide free stuff for anybody, you know, that's a big problem later on, I'm just telling you. Not only that, you guys, but this is something I hadn't thought about until today. The schools. Can you imagine the influx of if they try to put these kids in the schools? Can you imagine that even a lot of the parents are starting to stand up and go, whoa, hold on a minute. So now we're going to have these kids that we don't know where they're coming from. They were even talking about how it's messing up the hotels that are having to take these uh, illegal migrants in right now. It's all these reservations that they had had previously. They're having to cancel. They're saying they're having to cancel weddings. They're having to cancel events that these, uh, I guess, the hotels. So this is a domino effect. It's not just that we're like, oh, we don't want you coming to America. At least that's not how I think of it. It's just, it's putting a huge burden on a lot of these people financially, uh, safety-wise. You Now you've got, what are you going into schools? You've got... I mean, all this stuff possibly taking jobs. How are they going to get jobs? We discussed yesterday. So, and not to mention the massive incentive to have people, more people, come across the border. You know, now you can bet the people that are getting housed and free food and all this stuff, they're calling home. Hey, this is the best move we've ever made. You better get over here. You can beat your wife or whatever you want, and they won't even send you back. These people are nuts. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's what they're doing. And they're probably sending a lot of the money back home that they make too. A lot of them do that. I don't know. So, guys, I, I don't have anywhere to put this last story, and you made it all the way to the end of the video. I want to share it with you. Uh, Hollywood actor Rick Schroeder is the latest celebrity to break down and blow the whistle on the pedophilia and occult rituals in the entertainment industry, revealing sickening details about the disturbing occult rituals he witnessed as a child star in the industry. This is running rampant. I'm reading a book right now mm -hmm. about it. It is real. These demonic forces are real, the real deal. It's not something we see in horror movies. It is actual principalities that we are fighting against. Mm -hmm. And just watch it. Watch it. And, I, and while I'm talking about it, I got an email. And uh, I'm not sure if he wants his name out there or even if his name, this is his real name. But Stephen sends me some really good stuff. And all the people that send stuff to Ninja Nation Report, I really appreciate it. But... He says he's got thousands of hours researching Bible prof, prof, prophecy. Sorry, prophecy and the jab, the music industry, transhumanism. And I can tell by the stuff he sends me, he's legit. He's saying the mark will combine a patch style needles with Lucif Lucifer's, Lu Lucifer's as a growing indicator of who's who has it with ID info, banking info, trackability, and DNA changing with the mRNA tech. Uh, salvation is for humans, not hybrids. Keep that in mind. Salvation is for human and not hybrids. This push is coming. This, all this digital ID and all the stuff we're talking about the WHO and this global system they're setting up, mm -hmm. it is so obvious what's coming. So thank you for making it to the end. I'm, I'm really struggling on what I can talk about on this platform. Uh, there's going to be more stuff talked about on Rumble. Uh, 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 Finan uh, FP Network is the name of the mm -hmm. Rumble. Yep. Check us out there. We're very active on Twitter right now, mm -hmm. Financial Prepper uh, PPR. So check us out on Twitter. Check us out on Rumble. We probably won't be able to be on this platform very long because I'm eventually going to talk about something they don't want, and I'll, it'll be over. It'll be just like yep. that. That happens to every to a lot of people that try to tell the truth. I just saw someone did a quote the other day. They said the next step is the chip, and the next step is they're going to do financially through the chip, and then they're going to control every move you make. How and you soon won't are... be able to eat without it. 
How that soon are familiar? we to that? I, I don't know. You, I was talking to one of you guys called in the other day, uh, we're one of you, the subscribers, and she even said, she said, I never, ever thought I would see this in my day and age. She said, I thought I would be way gone before this happened, and it's happened so fast. Um, he and I look at each other sometimes, and we're like, is this seriously happening? When we do the research for the news, and we're reading it, and we're like, is this seriously for real? And then you have to, when you do your research, and you're like, it's out there. It, it is. Well, many of these web pages where he's getting his information have been uh, password protected now. I mean, they don't really want this information out. That's why I'm, I say that. But remember, nobody is marked or doomed yet. Yep. So be optimistic about it and try to fight back. Let everybody know. That's how you fight back is educating people, mm -hmm. letting them know, hey, this is in the Bible. This is happening now. You know, I never understood how uh, the beast was going to get shot. Something's going to happen to him, and it was everybody's going to be every, everybody would see, because and they would be media. in awe of how how it happened. And I always thought, how is everybody going to see? Well, now we know straight through social media. It'll be on Twitter, YouTube, it, the, within Second. minutes. Yeah, Pam, it'll be there. Everybody will see it. So it's coming, guys. We're getting close. But for now, have an awesome, awesome day. See you in the next one. Later.